Hello friends, welcome to Quick Chess Videos. Today we are going to see series of encounters between Indian chess teacher and founder of Chess Base India, International Master Sagar Shah and the Indian Beast Grandmaster Adiban Baskaran. They have in all played a total of 3 games, 2 in 2009 and 1 in 2014. And the funny thing is, Adiban was black in all the games. This game was played in under 20 national 2009 in Chennai. We are going to see the strength of Adiban's attack against Sagar Shah. This game is a very good example of how to play with black with Nimzo Indian defense. <clears throat> the game started with d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight c3, bishop b4. This is called the Nimzo Indian defense. It is a very flexible opening for black. Black can play b6, bb7 or he can play d5 and c5 with the idea to attack the center or he, he can even capture on c3 and play against the bishop pair. White played e3, the game continued, short castles, bishop to d3, d5, knight f3 and c5. Black creates maximum tension in the center. The game continued, castles, knight c6, Black, white attacked the bishop with a3, bishop captures knight, pawn captures bishop. And this is one of the main starting position of the Ninja Indian defense. In this position, white has double bishops and but black can fight for exchanging the light squared bishop and then playing on the light squares. The game continued, pawn captures pawn, bishop captures pawn, queen c7 with the idea of an x-ray attack on the white bishop. White developed his bishop with bishop b2. If white captures the pawn on c5 then black can play knight a5 and white's pawn structure is a total mess and black is doing very fine. So after bishop b2 black played e5 opening up his bishop and creating more pressure in the center. In the previous encounter black played with b6 and bb7 and then when knight a5 and a very solid positional approach we will see that game later after e5. If white plays d5 with the idea to create a protected pass pawn in the center, then white will black will not allow it. Black will play knight a5, bishop e2, and black has a very powerful moves here now. e4, knight d2, and c4. The pawn has become lonely and the pass pawn has not been created in the center. So d5 is not a good idea for white. So white played here after e5 h3 with the idea to stop bishop g4. Black played e4. If black captures on d4, pawn captures pawn. And to open this x-ray if black captures on d4 with the knight then it is not good as after pawn captures knight, queen captures bishop. White can take on e5. And we can see that white is very well developed and white can bring his rook to c1 and attack the queen. And after knight d5 rook c1 white is doing very well due to his active pieces. So after h3 black played a very typical move e4. This divides the board into two parts the queen side and the king side. The plans will be determined black will try to play on the king side while white will try to play on the queen side. The game continued, knight d2, rook e8 defending the pawn, bishop to b5, black took on d4, he captures d4, now the knight can be permanently stationed to d5, but first white is threatening to play rook c1 and have some pressure, so 
so black released that pressure by the move a6 bishop to e2 and now developing bishop f5 queen b3 rook b8 d8 activating all the pieces rook fc1 and black played queen d7 already there are hints of sacrifice on bishop captures h3 white played bishop to f1 to guard this knight d5 activating the knight and creating a very powerful blockade in the center a4 and white wants to play bishop a3 and this is the first critical moment of the game pause the video and try to think how to continue the attack black wants to bring maximum pieces into the attack and he played rook e6 a very powerful move this is a traditional rook lift black wants to play rook g6 and rook h6 in order to sacrifice on h3 a new piece is involved in the attack and it can get deadly white made a prophylactic measure with king h1 black played rook g6 and bishop a3 pause the video and try to find the devastating blow provided by black in this position bishop captures boom sacrificing the bishop in order to open up the king if white accepts the sacrifice then it is going to be a big problem for white as after queen f5 queen into pawn is a threat and it cannot be stopped as well as queen g5 with the idea queen g1 is mate so if white tries something like knight c4 then queen captures f2 and queen g1 or queen g2 is just unstoppable checkmate if the bishop moves somewhere then queen g2 is checkmate after queen f5 if white plays the move rook a2 in order to guard the second rank then black can simply play queen g5 with the idea queen g1 and again if the bishop moves then there is queen g2 checkmate so the only defense after queen f5 is to play bishop g2 but in this line also black is winning after queen captures on f2 rook g1 and queen captures d2 and black gets his piece back and e3 is hanging as well and after that d4 will also be hanging and black is completely winning so after bishop captures h3 White played the best move here. Try to find for yourself. White took on e4. Correct. Black played rook e8. Attacking the knight. And here a very funny thing is. That all of black's pieces are located on the light squares. As we see. Only the pawn on g7 is there on the dark square. This is a very good strategy. In order to meet this bishop. A dark squared bishop by black has placed all his pieces on light squares so this bishop is doing nothing so after rook e8 attacking the knight white played the move f3 f3 is a mistake white should have tried knight d6 attacking the rook as well as the knight and black has to force a draw with a series of sacrifice by Bishop captures g2, bishop captures g2, and rook captures g2. Now the idea is to play queen h3 check. So white is forced to take on g2. And after queen g4 check, king f1. Try to find the draw for black here. Knight captures on e3, f captures on e3, queen f3 check. The king cannot come to e1 as rook captures e3 would lose the queen. So after king g1, queen g3 check and it will be a perpetual draw and the game would end in a piece. Pt. After rook e8, white played f3 which is a mistake. Black played queen f5. Knight to f2. And here it is black to play and win. In this game, after 6 moves. White was already checkmated. Try to find the devastating blows. 
बिशप कैप्चर्स जी टू चेक एक्सीलेंट मूव बिशप कैप्चर्स जी टू रुक कैप्चर्स जी टू किंग कैप्चर्स जी टू द आइडिया ऑफ ब्लैक इज टू एलिमिनेट ऑल द डिफेंडर्स ऑफ द किंग एंड नाउ ओनली अ लोनली नाइट इज डिफेंडिंग द किंग ब्लैक प्लेड नाइट कैप्चर्स ई थ्री चेक इफ किंग गोज टू जी वन then it would be the same fate after knight captures d4 the knight is attacking the queen as well as the pawn and it is totally hopeless situation white played after knight captures e3 king g3 knight captures d4 attacking the queen and threatening queen captures f3 white is forced to take on b7 and after knight e2 check king h2 if king h4 then there is a checkmate in one here knight g2 checkmate so after knight e2 check king h2 black played queen f4 check and white resigned here because if king goes to h3 then there is queen g3 checkmate and if the king goes to h1 then there is queen h4 check knight h3 and queen captures h3 check this is a very perfect example of how to play with the nimzo indian and it can be a model game for the nimzo indian players as well if you loved the video don't forget to like share and subscribe and leave your comment in the comment section waiting for you in the next video bye bye